okay? All right, now important want to know your enemy, and we'll throw a few things in here. It says, as the fall of Satan and his evil first forces occurred before the creation of the Adamic race, it's not described in any detail in scripture, but it's referred to only in veiled and indirect ways. However, there are instances when the inspired prophets addressing an earthly ruler would break forth into language which could only refer to Satan as the unseen power behind the earthly ruler. And Ezekiel is one of those. Uh, there, are, uh, there are many of them, but uh, we just picked out a couple here. Ezekiel 28. And here the prophet is speaking against the king of Tyre, who was a proud uh, king, arrogant and, and uh, blasphemous towards the things of the Lord. And uh, it starts in verse 1, but verse 11, it says... There comes another burst as the prophet speaks to the king of Tyre. And it says in verse 11, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now look at the next words. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Was the king of Tyre ever in the garden of Eden? No. But he's speaking to a man and he sees behind the man that there's a power that's motivating him. And here the prophet is addressing not only the man, but the power that motivates the man. Okay? Every, verse 13 again, every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, and so on and so on and so on. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So... He had something to do with music. Can you see that there? Verse 13, the last part of verse 13. Okay, that is the enemy before his fall. Now in Isaiah 14, and have a look there. Isaiah 14, I think this is important to have a look at maybe. Because when Adam and Eve were created, Satan was already... Uh, a fallen angel and here it actually starts in verse 3 and in my Bible it says fall of the king of Babylon and so here the prophet is addressing the king of Babylon as our notes also say and then verse 12 Again, he's addressing the power behind the king of Babylon. And he says, how are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you fallen down to the ground, you who weakened the nations? For you've said in your heart, there's five I wills there, okay? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will set on the mount, sit on the mount of the congregation on the, on the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Yes, you shall be brought down to hell. Sheol is hell. To the lowest depths of the pit and so on. And so this is where all the problem problems began in the beginning. All right? It is... Uh, it is believed generally that there were three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. And uh, we will have some more scriptures to back that, that Michael is in charge of the armies of heaven, which you will also read in Revelations chapter 12. Gabriel is the messenger who came to Daniel and uh, his name is mentioned there where Daniel said that he saw Gabriel. Gabriel came and spoke to him. Also Gabriel spoke to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, spoke to Mary, uh, and, uh, and so on. So Gabriel is the messenger, and Lucifer is believed to have been the third archangel who was in charge of the music in heaven, as we pointed the scripture out in Ezekiel 28. Then from Isaiah 14, we see where Lucifer's problem was. There were five I wills there. Okay? Five times he said, I will, I will, I will. And uh, we sometimes say, what is the heart of sin? 
hits the eye in the middle. You take the eye out of it and, uh, and uh, you have no sin. And so Lucifer then became Satan as he fell. All right? And these are the two scriptures that we've uh, just read here on page one. And so it says in that page one again, just underneath uh, point B, it says, actually the Lord is through the prophets identifying a power behind these earthly rulers. Uh, for it was Satan who expressed his own spirit through these men, causing them to exalt themselves in rebellion to God, only to be overthrown by their justice uh, and God's power. All right. Now, this last paragraph on page one, we have a couple of different viewpoints which you will come across from time to time. And uh, this bottom one is called the gap theory. All right. The gap theory. It was actually originally uh, promoted, I think, by uh, the Schofield Bible, the Schofield Study Bible, and uh, that is is a theory. Uh, I, it's mostly rejected now, but but it, it's good to know that it exists uh, and that there is a gap between uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 and the argument goes this way, this way in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and he did but the, the argument goes nobody really knows when the beginning was and verse 2 says and the earth was or the Hebrew really the Hebrew word is became without form and void. And so the argument is God never creates anything without form and void. And the argument goes that God created the heavens and the earth beautiful in the beginning. But because there was a pre-Adamic creation that sinned, God destroyed it and then started again. And that's the gap theory there. Now, in that verse 2, the earth became without form and void. That word void in the Hebrew is B-O-H-U-W, Bohu. It appears only twice in the Old Testament. And the other passage where it appears is in Jeremiah chapter 4. And verse 23, and it is there where such a passage is seen where the spirit is addressed behind an earthly ruler and tends to indicate that there was a destruction as a result of God's judgment. Okay? And uh, you can look some of that up yourself. I don't want to spend too much time on it. So that's called a gap theory. Uh, Page 2, it says, another school of thought suggests that the earth became, and then the Hebrew word tohu, fi, bohu, which is without form and void, formless confusion uh, is what it means. Anger and judgment on Satan when he with his angels was cast out of heaven. The judgment also falling on a race of people over whom he uh, became ruler now this is thought to be the creation of a past age to which all the fossils and the dinosaurs belong now I tend to subscribe to creation science or answers in Genesis but where our, all of our scientists constantly run in conflict with is that there are there are fossils that are found there are so many millions of videos old and so on and and I know they have answers for that uh, and we we've, we've seen some of that but our kids in school still are taught that as gospel truth the theory of our evolution in other words and so prior to answers in Genesis rising and really coming to the forefront with strong teaching on that, that the earth is only 6,000 years old. The earth was created 6,000 years ago. That is, of course, poo-hooed by all the learned scientific, uh, 
scientific uh, people who, who say yes but and, and they come up with all, all the rest okay so here we have a creation that they then put in between Genesis 1 1 and 1 2 uh, page 2 the third paragraph says therefore the sea depicted in Genesis 1 2 would appear to be the there are many scholars today who are quite emphatic about the earth being 6,000 years old all right so you can take your pick I understand you got answers in Genesis coming here soon so you'll have plenty to chew on there but just throw that in for what it's worth because you'll come across it and it's good to have some understanding of that we do that later on in the year when we look at Bible prophecy too there's a variety of viewpoints we just give you a little bit of insight into some of the other viewpoints so at least you know what's around the place and that you get some understanding of it okay we look first of all at Satan and some of his names we'll go through that fairly quickly he is called Lucifer and uh, Lucifer really means the shining one uh, the word Lucifer is a Dutch word or in Holland we use it for match okay a match we call a Lucifer in Dutch uh, and so that's interesting too okay so Lucifer means a shining one and uh, and he fell uh, before creation we actually see the fall of Satan three times we see him fall from Lucifer to Where's my pens? To Satan. And that's in Isaiah 14, as you've seen there. So that happened long before the creation of man. But then we see him fall again the second time at. Uh, We see him fall again at the ascension of Jesus in Revelation chapter 12. Now Jesus had a preview of that or made mention of that in uh, I think John chapter 12. Let me look at it. I'll find the scripture. Now John chapter 12 and verse 31. John chapter 12 and verse 31 Jesus is about to go to the cross and he says now is the judgment of this world now the ruler of this world will be cast out now in Job's day he was a fallen angel but he still had access into the presence of God and and he condemned Job in front of God all right but Jesus has risen for our justification there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And because we now in Christ are legally perfect, because Jesus is our righteousness, there is now no condemnation to us Christians. And therefore, in Revelation chapter 12, there was war in heaven as soon as Jesus rose, and Satan was thrown out of heaven, no longer the accuser of the brethren. He is now confined to this earth's atmosphere, as Revelation 12 goes on to say. He's the prince of the power of the air. Then it goes on to say in Revelation 12 that he knows that he has but a short time, and that's why he goes about as a roaring lion. He's the god of this world system. And isn't it a mess around the world? Whether you look into Africa, or you look into the Middle East, or you look into into Iran or Afghanistan or wherever you look it's just a mess and it's, most of it is religious warfare and Satan is just stirring that stirring great destruction and it seems almost as though it's impossible to be solved 
Okay? Now the third time that he falls is uh, year range he goes into the bottomless pit for a thousand years at the end of that he gets let loose for that final testing but then he goes that's the end of him forever okay and he knows that's coming that's why he's wild at the moment okay he's called Satan he's called the devil and the devil simply means a, uh, an accuser a slanderer these, these kind of names kind of indicate what he is like. Uh, and that is, is a symbolism in a sense that's used. Uh, it's the same as Jesus. Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Now when we think of a lamb, we think of meek and mild and defenseless and so on. That's how Jesus came. But Jesus is also called the Lion of Judah. And so there are, there are symbols used of the character of Jesus like that. And so we see Satan, uh, which means a, an opponent, an adversary, a devil, which means a slanderer, a serpent, which means uh, he comes like a snake in the grass. He, he comes into a situation, you can't see him coming, uh, and before long he's got a relationship terribly upset, he's got things gone wrong and so on, and that's why we need to walk close with God. Then we can see him coming. We often say he doesn't come to the front door of your life on his hobnail boots and rings the bell, here I am. He comes on his slippers to the back door and he sneaks in and sometimes he's well into your situation before you realize he's there. If we walk with God and we stay close to the Lord, then we know that he's coming. And we can sneak to the back door and when he comes to the back door on his, on his sneakers, we can stick our head out and say, boo, I knew you were coming and get the fright of his life, okay? So you can see him coming. He's called a dragon. And the word dragon uh, indicates uh, more uh, his involvement in great world power. Aggressive and ruthless. Uh, in Revelation he's classed as a dragon with seven heads and ten horns. And that has to do with political powers. We will talk more about that in, 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 uh, in our study of uh, of Bible prophecy and the Lord's return. He's called Beelzebub, prince of the devils. Do you know that Beelzebub in Strong's dictionary uh, says a dung god. That's why he's on the nose sometimes. Uh, Ed Selvoso, uh, a, a, a preacher very involved in the, in the revival in South America, uh, says it really means that Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies and so on and, 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 and he has a whole theory on that okay over the page he's called the Prince of the Power of the Air so he inhabits this earth's atmosphere He's also called in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this age, of this world system, of this cosmos, this present evil age. He's the ruler of this world. And remember when Jesus came in Matthew chapter 4 and he was tempted uh, in three different areas of his life, uh, Satan led him up on a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give them to you. And no, Jesus did not say, they are not yours to give to me. Because they were. See, and if Jesus would have bowed down and worshipped Satan, Jesus would have got authority of this, of this whole world system. But he would have been subject to Satan. And Jesus said, we don't do business like this. I'll do it my father's way, thank you. 
And so Jesus went the way of the cross, which is a far more cruel way. But in that, he dealt Satan a death blow. We read this in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, where it says, The seed of the woman, which was Christ, and it says, "He, uh, You shall bruise his heel, but he shall bruise your head. Okay, and Satan's head was bruised, squashed, when Jesus went to the cross. Okay, now with Satan, of course, there are evil spirits. So you've got a kingpin with a whole host of evil hosts. And there's some difference of opinion there. And again, we've given you uh, a couple of different views. And uh, one is that they are the spirits of men belonging to a pre-Adamic creation. The next couple of lines underneath that paragraph says there's no scripture that would either directly or indirectly support this view. I don't believe it, but some do. All right, and that then links in with the gap theory. Understand that? I subscribe to point B, that the evil spirits, that they are angels which fell with Satan. It is suggested that there were three archangels, Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer, and we've talked about that, and each having command over one-third of the angels, and that when Lucifer fell, one-third of the angels fell with him. And that is indicated in Revelation chapter 12. Now in Revelation chapter 12 again, what's really addressed there is, is, uh, is Caesar, <clears throat> or the Roman Empire, but we get insight in the fact that Satan is behind that. Okay, that's one of the horn or one of the heads on the dragon. Taking Revelations 12 and verse 1. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. That speaks of the nation Israel, the 12 tribe nation Israel, of which the Jews are part. Okay, and, and uh, being with child cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And the Jews came back out of Babylon, back to the Holy Land for the specific purpose f that Jesus might be born. See, the ten tribes that went into captivity into Assyria never came back out of captivity. And Jesus could not have been born in captivity. Now the two tribes... Judah and Benjamin went into captivity into uh, Babylon and they were there for 70 years and then they were released. And the reason that they were released, and Daniel 9 makes it clear, that Christ might be born of them. And they were released to come back to the Holy Land. Now they were under Roman rule at that time, but Jesus was born in, in freedom in a sense. But they were back in the Holy Land and, and this is the woman, that's the nation, gave birth to the child, which is Jesus. And in verse 3, and another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his head. His tail drew the third part of the, of the stars of heaven and, and, uh, 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 and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And if Mary and Joseph wouldn't have fled to Egypt, Jesus would have been killed by Herod. Isn't that right? And who was behind Herod? Herod, the dragon. See? And she bore a male child. Mary gave birth to a male child, Jesus, who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up into God and to his throne. Now that's 33 years later when he ascended. Okay, then the woman went into the wilderness, and that means the Jewish nation went back into captivity again. And the wilderness indicates humanity. Okay, so the Jews were scattered. And they'd be scattered for nearly 2,000 years, and it's in our day when they've been brought back in, into the Holy Land again. That's fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Where she has a place uh, prepared by God that they should feed her there for 1,260 days. Uh, Verse 7, here comes, and war broke out in heaven. See, when Jesus ascended, war broke out in heaven. Michael and the ark and his angels. So Michael has angels. Can you see that? And so what's indicated here is that we have three, three archangels. <clears throat> Michael, Gabriel, Gabriel, Lucifer. 
uh, and, and uh, that each of them has a third of the angels under their control. And when Satan fell, a third of the angels fell, which are, his, which are demons today. But Gabriel and Michael are still there. They have a third too. So we have two good angels for every demon. You see that? And the angels, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7 says, they are ministers to those who are the heirs of salvation. So you have two angels on your side for every demon that's against you. How's that? We're on the winning side. Always have been and always will be. Alright? Okay. Now, the middle of page 3, it says in point B there that uh, the, the, another uh, thought is that they are uh, angels which fell with Satan suggested that three archangels, gave remark, each having command over one third of the angels, as we just said, and that when Lucifer fell, a third fell with him. And there's your scriptures in Revelation. Point C, I do not describe to either, which says it's a combination of both A and B together. I don't believe that, but there are some that do. And so that's why I've just thrown that in there for what it's worth. Now we talk about the evil spirits and their names. Now, maybe if we turn to Ephesians chapter 1 for a moment. Ephesians chapter 1, 10. The apostle is praying that the people of, the, of Ephesus might have an understanding of the, the, the greatness of God's power towards us who believe. Verse 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated at him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Okay, so Jesus has been lifted up far above principality, power, might, and dominion. So principality and power you see there. Now, if we come to Ephesians chapter 6, And verse 12, we have another classification like that, talking about the evil spirits. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. And so we have then, Satan's evil angels with him grouped in a network a bit like this. <coughs> Satan himself is the kingpin and under him are principalities. Now a principality is a prince spirit, a prince demon with a whole host under him. And, uh, and they are mostly territorial spirits prince demons have to do with an area a geographic area and so the king of Tyre or the king of Babylon there was a prince demon who had control over that whole area and influenced that king and so as we move around in ministry we come into another area and there are territorial spirits there I have planted something like 20 churches and I've gone into places where they've said, don't go to that place. This is a preacher's graveyard. And I said, ha -ha, we're going to have some resurrections. You see? But we need to know what we're about. We need to realize that we're not fighting against man. We have to fight with territorial spirits. Okay? Now those of you who know a little bit of the history of this church, this church has had some difficulties in the past and, and when the main catastrophe took place I, I was here or I came here straight afterwards with my caravan planted it over there in the caravan park and, and I was there one day on my knees praying in, in the caravan park because things weren't going well and it wasn't only another church in our church we had some other difficulties around here and as I was praying the Lord says 
I have given you authority over this area. This is demonic power. You stand against it. And so I started to do warfare and I started to bind the territorial spirits and told them that we have authority in this area and that they have to move and that I started then claiming open heaven over, over Hamilton and over Portland and over, over Warrnambool and, and this area. Yesterday we had a regional meeting. We had the pastors together from the whole area. And I believe God's given that to us. Now not only there's other denominations here, praise God, the more the better. Okay, but together we are working for the furtherance of God's work in this area. And there are territorial spirits against us. But we have authority over them, and we take authority over them. We put our foot on them, you see? And we need to realize that that's what it is. Okay, then the next bracket that we come under, there are powers. And powers it is a group of demons, such as Mary Magdalene had seven spirits in her. They are of similar kind, they work hand in hand, and it usually starts off with one, and then one opens the door to another one, and then that person really gets into a bad state, and, and it becomes a, like a spider's nest, you know, and, and so on. Now, the legion was in a bad state. He had 6,000 in him, see? But that, that was a, 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 a power, that's, that's what powers refer to. It was a, a group of evil spirits. That was not a principality, because it had nothing to do with a territory. It wasn't a territorial thing. And then there are individual demons, okay? The girl that came into my office that knew nothing about it, I just prayed for her, a big squeak and was gone and so on. That wasn't a, a group of demons, and that wasn't a demon as part of a group, because that wouldn't have come out so easy. It was just an individual spirit which she picked up somewhere, and it could be for a variety of reasons. She didn't even know it, she just had some trouble, and I prayed for her, and it was gone. I thought, hallelujah, good, amen. All right, see? Praise the Lord. Okay, so principalities. A few references there to it. Powers. Down the bottom of page 3. And that talks then about a group of evil spirits which, which uh, uh, can sometimes be working in a group of people. It can be working against the church and be working through an organization. It can be working just within a person and so on. But it is, uh, again, a lesser rank up the top of page 4 than that of a principality. Then there are demons, which are just individual evil spirits, translated also as devils. Then there are spirits, same thing, small letter S in the Bible. And in Acts 16:16, 16, 16, this woman who was a fortune teller, she ran after the Apostle Paul uh, as he, and, and Silas as they went to prayer. And they said, these are the sons of the Most High God, hear ye them. Was he saying anything wrong? No, nah, she was doing good advertising. But it came from the wrong source. See? Uh, many a preacher who's not too spiritual would be glad with that kind of... Uh, you know, because she was well known in the town. You see? She, had, uh, she was a slave girl that belonged to some masters. And, uh, and they get a fair bit of money through her fortune telling. And so she was well respected in the town. And she was well known in the town. And she was saying, these are good guys. These are good guys. Listen to them. And so on. And the Apostle Paul, you know, it just grieved him in his spirit. And, and she did this many days. So not the first time she did it, did he spin around on his heels and says, Come out of her in Jesus' name. See? Uh, uh, he didn't, didn't do that. They went to, to the prayer meeting and as they prayed about that, you know, they, they, maybe they were just binding that thing. Maybe they were rebuking him. I don't know. And, and so a few days later, again, they were on their way to prayer. And there she was, she was yelling again. And, and something just rose in the Apostle Paul. Okay? A manifestation of the gift of, I don't know, a gift of faith or whatever it is. Or, and he spent around his ears and come out of her in Jesus' name. Turned around and went to a prayer meeting. And it, hey, it says it came out in the same hour. He didn't come straight out and he told her that. But he, being a son of God, as we are, had faith that if he laid the command, that thing had no option but to go. So, come out of her in Jesus' name. So, that job's done. And away they went to prayer. And that thing came out within an hour. Well, out of that, they got caned and they got thrown in prison. And you know the rest of the story. Hmm. Any candidates for deliverance ministry? 
All right, rulers of the darkness of this age. So wherever there's darkness and sin, they get a foothold, okay? That's why we must make sure that we don't have darkness in our life. The power of darkness, angels of destruction, all different names given to them. Okay, 